Okay. Um, thank you for joining us today. As I said, my name is Marcy Ravelli. I'm the coordinator of the AAC Learning Networks. And tonight we're going to talk about comprehensive literacy and literacy ideas for home. And I am so excited to have this topic because um, first off, I, I didn't have to do a lot of research. The idea behind this whole um, presentation tonight was that um, we all could discuss and generate ideas for literacy that works for um, for parents in the home uh, that's quick and that's easy and that you can do on the fly. Uh, and so hopefully my my hope by the end of tonight is that tomorrow you can think to yourself, I'm going to try this one thing. Um, and so that's why we are here tonight. Um, if you are able, uh, please do turn on your cameras. I would love to see who's here. Um, we have uh, recently rebranded ourselves. We used to be the a a a a NWACS evening seminars, and um, we decided to do a name change, which is the AAC Learning Networks. And the idea behind the name change really is about um, inclusivity and a community and a sense of belonging. Um, and I feel that when I see people, and maybe it's just me, that like when I see people and not names, I, I feel that we are a community. So um, of course, if you're driving, don't do that. Um, but if you are able, um, please do turn on your camera so that we can see and, um, and welcome you visually. Um, I will, we will still be offering continuing ed education certificates. So if you are a professional and need a CE or continuing ed certificate, there'll be a link at the end of this program and you'll click on the link and fill out a survey and then we'll send you a uh, CE certificate. So we're gonna talk about what is comprehensive literacy for all. And then we're gonna get uh, started with whiteboarding. We're just gonna try to brainstorm some simple ideas um, that all families uh, can pick up one or two ideas and try to do at home. So Comprehensive Literacy is a book by Karen Erickson and David Copenhaver, and it came out in 2019. And I think what you really need to know about it, at least for me and my experience, is that prior to this book, when I thought about literacy, it seemed so big, so vast, and I'm a speech therapist, um, but, you know, even when I was raising my son in his early years, how do I wrap my head around all the different parts of learning to read and write? And so when this book came out, um, I read it and it, it, at least for me, it was like, oh, my goodness, the schema or the way that they offer um how to focus on reading and writing seems so user friendly to me. Uh, and so I'm hoping that you find that as well too. In the book, just a few quotes, you know, they state that students who are in a typical third grade classroom receive two hours of reading and language arts instruction a day. And then they go on further to say that students who are in special education instruction have way more downtime due to personal care needs or classroom management as examples. And so there are more, and there's more passive engagement in reading activities. And, and this is something that if you've ever observed your kids in the classroom, you may already know and have a sense of this. Um, there was a study that I couldn't remember who, uh, who the authors were, but um, to me, this was a fascinating study. Uh, it comes out of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and the, the researchers went into classrooms, self-contained classrooms, 
And they just looked. They just looked to see, are there books? Are there writing materials? Are there crayons? Are there things that are accessible to kids um, for literacy growth? Um, and the answer to that was, oh my gosh, no. You know, so a lot of our uh, self-contained classrooms are just limiting or putting away in closets or locking a lot of these materials um, that would otherwise be accessible in a typical classroom. And so what we know about literacy is to have the least dangerous assumption, right? Which is all beings, all human beings are capable of emergent literacy and communication, regardless of the severity or complexity of their disability. Uh, and I'm gonna just highlight that word emergent because we're gonna come back and talk about that. Um, Emergent doesn't mean that all kids are going to be able to read and write uh, the Odyssey, uh, Odysseus or uh, <laughs> uh, Shakespeare, right? Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about what the difference is between emergent and um, conventional is what, what they call it. Furthermore, they say children don't learn to read and write because they can't. They don't learn to read and write because we don't know how to teach them uh, and we don't teach them how, right? So I am also going to turn off profile cameras. Oh, sure. Is anybody else having um, trouble hearing me? No, Janice is shaking her head. No, I've got some no's. Hmm, okay. Meredith, um, can you try turning your camera off and see if that helps? And I'll, I'll, I'll try to stop moving. Thank you, everyone. I like to bob around and talk with my hands. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is the kind of the cheat sheet for thinking about reading and writing for your kids. And in the book, they ask these four questions at the top. Is your child able to identify most of the letters of the alphabet most of the time? Are they engaged and interact during shared reading? Do they have a means of communication and interaction? And do they understand that print has meaning? And so if you answer no to one or more of these questions, the book suggests that you operate with the schema or the framework of daily emergent interventions. And there are five of these. If you answer yes to all four questions, then they suggest that your child is ready for more conventional interventions. And there are four of these. Today, we're gonna to focus on daily emergent interventions. And then throughout this uh, winter and spring series, we'll be picking up and highlighting both emergent and conventional interventions. But I wanna point out one other thing, which is um, there's, you see that arrow that is uh, going from the top to the bottom. It says, does your child have a means of communication and interaction? And um, maybe your child does, maybe it's emergent, maybe they don't have it yet. And so, we're definitely gonna to wanna to keep working on a means of communication and interaction. Okay, so, so here it is, here's the cheat sheet, right? Uh, there's six things. Uh, in emergent literacy, the focus is on shared reading, self-directed or independent reading. So when you think about reading, put those two together, shared, and then independent, meaning they do something related to reading all by themselves. There's two. And then shared writing and independent writing. Uh, and then the last two are alphabet and phonologic awareness and means of communication and interaction. So in my head, I'm a, I'm a big picture thinker and I like to think of this as like an umbrella, right? I, it, now I can hold all of this in my head as a parent. Okay, a little bit of reading, independent and shared. A little bit of writing, independent and shared. The alphabet and phonologic awareness, and we'll talk about these things, and then keep working on that communication. 
Uh, so here is shared reading. And the definition is two or more people in a book. <laughs> um, but what I liked about what they said next is the focus isn't on the book. The focus is on the interaction and the shared experience when you're looking at or reading a book together. So when you do that, you are picking up a book. I have a book. This is my all-time favorite book, The Paper Bad Princess, because the princess doesn't marry the prince in the end because he's kind of a bum. It's a great book. Um, so you, when you pick it up, you're showing your child how the book is held, how the book has a cover. You might say, oh my gosh, here's the title, The Paper Bag Princess. Um, let's turn the page, right? All of the things that you would say naturally, you're teaching your child that there's pages. You can talk about um, the letters in there. Oh goodness, there! look, there's some words. I see a capital E. That's the same letter as your name, right? You can point out words that rhyme. And then because I'm a speech therapist, um, you can bridge your AAC with shared reading. And so in the speech world, we have a shortcut to remember, it's called follow the car. And in car, when you're reading, you can read uh, and then you can comment. Wow, that dragon looks really angry. And then you wait. And what you're looking for is to see if your child will also comment or you know comment by touching something or using their device. Maybe they don't. So then you might ask a question, <gasps> what's happening? And then you wait. And then if they still don't, you can answer your question for them. You can respond for them. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a video because, I'm gonna stop share for a second. Um, but what I wanna tell you, <laughs> what I wanna tell you is, you don't have to do this one. And for, sometimes for some families and kids, just having the book and sitting down and getting 30 seconds is, is enough, right? Um, but if you, if you have a child or a student who will sit with you and look at a book together, uh, then I'm gonna show you a video of what the car or follow the car looks like. Let's see, where is my video? Here it is. Can I get a thumbs up if you can see and then hear? It's her house, that's Mary coming out of her house. What do you see? What do you see in the picture? What do you see, what is that? What is that? Do you know? Uh, what's that? What? That's a sheep. And what's this? Do you know what that is? French door. Yeah, that's door. the door. It's like the door to her house. Door. Mm -hmm. Door. Mary came running out the door to catch the school bus. So that's an example of what car looks like um, to a child who will sit still and engage with a book. I'm going to share my screen for my PowerPoint. Some other suggestions I have um, are just to be use more of your affect, I mean more of your intonation and your sound effects um, and have fun when you're reading and enjoy yourself. And also don't worry about reading all the words. You can focus on the pictures. You don't even have to focus on the pictures. You can just focus on, wow, you really like turning the pages. Uh, and all of that is good.
I'm looking at Cass's question. Asking a question feels a bit tough because most GLP process, processes don't do well with questions until at least stage four. Very, very true. Uh, and so maybe you might modify that um, strategy. Um, the point isn't so much to ask the question. The point is to read and then pause and then maybe look at the device. Hmm. Right? To try to get more of that interaction piece and that shared um, AAC, you know, uh, conversation or communication with AAC. Um, so I wouldn't harp too much on the on the question. But that's a good point. Um, certainly, there are read uh, shared reading challenges, as I've kind of mentioned. Um, there's individual differences in kids, uh, such as the ability to sit still. Um, the, some kids can't physically access the book. Um, some kids like to engage in the book in a sensory motor way. They might want to explore it more uh, visually by flipping the pages or, you know, some kids still will explore tactilely with their mouths. Um, and so definitely recognize that you need to have an al alternative idea uh, if you have a child or a student such as this. Um, and really all the mm, doctors and national uh, whoever's uh, suggest, uh, do you read to your child every day? Uh, and that is the number one thing that I would say beyond any other thing, how can you get a little bit of reading, a shared reading with your child every day? Uh, and if not, um, what is that barrier? And uh, we'll have time at the end and we welcome uh, your story and we can try to help you brainstorm some solutions for that. So independent reading is just a time for students to explore and read books independently. Um, they can be picking up a book from a pile. They can be choosing from uh, and listening to books. And I'm gonna show you a couple of websites that have some free access to um, online books. Um, and don't forget these can also be maps, recipes, comics, trading cards, anything that has text on it counts. So if your child likes cards or likes Pokemon, um, that can be a way to support independent reading. Um, independent writing and access to, which I can't see, access to a full alphabet. Um, so emergent writing can be thought of as the exploration of writing for learners who do not yet fully understand what it means to write. And this may be due to their inexperience with print generally, but it also can be due to their inexperience with writing tools specifically. Um, and my suggestion here is just to notice and to celebrate any attempts to write or to manipulate letters. And to give you an example, of this, I worked in a home of a child who, and you know what, I'm gonna stop sharing just so you guys can see this in bigger form. And I think I can pin myself, pin, okay. Um, I worked with a child and we gave this child a sketchbook, just a book I got at um, Office Max. And this child had some motor challenges and anything related to paper and pencil um, was not tolerated. Uh, and so how we approached this first was, <laughs> all right, well, I'll start here. Um, he had a whole bunch of pictures that he really liked. And in this case, he liked Aquaman. And uh, I gave him a squiggle pen, uh, which I have a picture for and a website for. And I, we just put the picture on the page and I said, here, write something. And he spent 10 seconds, 15 seconds. He was so distracted by the squiggle pen, the vibrating pen that, you know, he uh, lasted about that long until he realized, oh man, I am writing and I don't like writing. Um, and so um, 
And then I said, oh, did you write Aquaman? And I wrote it with him. I'll, I see your comments. I'll get to it in a second. Um, this was um, uh, stencils and dot art. Uh, and then I gave him a, a pen. And this is a little bit of hand over handing. I said, who is the fish? And he uh, spelled pop. And this was with me helping him a little bit. Uh, these ones were um, stamps. Um, so I, what I was trying to do was not give him a pen or a pencil or a crayon, but I was trying to give him materials where he could use his hands. And so he would make a stamp and then I would say, you know, what do you want to say? Um, and here, uh, you know, this is a little bit guided, no fly, because penguins don't fly. Um, I don't remember what he wrote here. Uh, this one was my, because my uh, dad likes eagles, I think he was saying. And so I just wanted to show this to you because I'm gonna go and share my screen again. Um, writing can start with access to writing materials, um, maybe and, and and maybe not with pens and crayons. Um, so these are my own early ideas. Um, I know a lot of kids are averse uh, to art, uh, and that may be due to their fine motor. Um, I'm gonna look to see what the comments were, just to see what you all have to say. Frustrated when reading. Ooh, I would love for you to share this. Um, it, we're gonna talk in about um, five more minutes. Um, I would love wit for, says wit for you to share this with the group. Um, and Cass, thank you. Yeah, speaking of not tolerating things, <laughs> you're not alone. Thank you, Cass. Loved your comment. Uh, okay, uh, the other part of shared writing is something called predictable chart writing. Um, this is something that shows up in school. Um, it's not something that I ever did with my son, um, but uh, we're gonna discuss what chart writing is in future meetings for AAC Learning Networks. Um, and so I'm not gonna go through it here. Um, and I think in the interest of time that we have a video, and this is a video, um, uh, that the slide deck will be posted on our website. So you can go back and look at the video. The video is a really nice example of um, a way to do a shared writing activity. And this child has access to uh, the alphabet, but kind of modified just a few letters at a time. So moving on, uh, sorry, this is like just the heady stuff and then we'll get to the brainstorming stuff. Uh, alphabet and phonologic awareness. There's clear evidence that successfully developing alphabet knowledge and applying that knowledge in later reading is related to instructional opportunity rather than a severity of disability. Said another way, um, children learn uh, alphabet knowledge if we teach them. Children may not learn it if we don't teach them. Uh, students with significant disabilities can develop alphabet knowledge and apply it meaningfully to reading and spelling when it's taught and immediately applied in context um, over periods of months or years. And I think the takeaway for me for that statement is um, teaching alphabet and phonologic awareness and then making it stick through something that's meaningful. Um, so Aquaman was super meaningful for that particular child, although that wasn't an alphabet activity. Um, and then repeating it, doing it over months and years. This is kind of the breakdown of alphabet and phonologic awareness. And the only thing I wanna point out is, you know, we all, uh, work with our kids to say, you know, where's the A? So that's um, uh, recognizing the letter shapes. 
or you know what letter is this and that's naming the letters uh, but also alphabet and phonologic awareness um, are a little bit more than that it's really the sounds uh, identifying the sounds they make and then recognizing um, the patterns of word of sounds that's phonologic awareness um, the recommendation for this area is any instruction should be brief and my thoughts about home ideas are finding books that rhyme, obviously, uh, singing familiar songs with rhymes, obviously, we all hope, hopefully do some of that, um, making letters out of pie dough, out of Play-Doh, out of soap bubbles in the bathtub. Um, and then my favorite one is making making up a song with your child's name, you know, um, M-A-X spells Max, Max, Max. Max, Max, Max is M-A-X, right? Just making it up and singing it as part of like brushing your teeth routine. Uh, so those are all just super small, um, easy ideas for home. Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. And I'm gonna look to see who's here. Thank you, we have so many other people joining us. Um, it is 7.30 and the slide, oh, I gotta unpin myself, hold on, there we go. Uh, the slide that you just saw, I'm more than happy to go through some of my own favorite literacy ideas, um, but I also wanna hear from you all uh, what your favorite literacy ideas are, the things that work for you. Um, and so, hmm. Anybody want to guide us? Uh, and then for those of you who joined later, board games. Oh, thanks for saying that. Uh, for those of you who joined later, I would love for you to join. Um, turn on your camera if you're able um, so we can see and recognize you and uh, as, as part of our learning networks tonight. Um, I, I know a few people here, so I might just ask. Uh, let's see. Cass, what do you think? Do you think we, sh I could go through some or do you have some? What do you think? You want me to go first? Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, um, I'm gonna go back to my slide and just show you like four or five of my favorite fast and furious ideas. Um, in the top, corner. Uh, these are some ideas for uh, for alphabet and phonologic awareness. The mm, leapfrog phonics bus refrigerator magnets is actually really hard to find, but it's one of my favorite toys um, because it's not just a refrigerator magnet. You take the letter and you push it into the bus and it says B says B, B says B, Every letter makes a sound, B says B, and so it has that sound to it that some kids might like. Um, if your child uh, has a vision impairment or really appreciates um, touching and manipulating things, in the top corner, you'll see that purple A, which you can buy these um, tactile letters uh, but I also went to Fred Meyer a couple weeks ago and I got these um, uh, uh, sparkle stickers, which have a raised, you know, rough surface. And then um, I'm going to show you this because it's big. And instead of putting it on a card, um, which the child would most likely want to kind of pick up and explore with her mouth, um, we put them on a giant board and then the board could go on her tray uh, and so then she could actually feel the letters on the board without um, feeling like she needed to like pick up the board um, so that's an idea for letter exposure if you have somebody who's learning letters uh, with their hands or tactily mm, that's two um, some of my favorite apps and I know I have my slide. Maybe what I'll do is just tell you and then um, stop share. 
so I'm going to go through the I Speak Word app, the uh, Montessori Crossword app, um, and then I will tell you a little bit about Pictello, and then I'll talk a little bit about book flicks and tumble books. So um, we'll do that. And then if we have time at the end, um, we can do more. Shaving cream, writing wizard, I'm so glad. Uh, spelling when typing names of songs or videos on YouTube, fantastic. I'm gonna write all these down and um, we will um, put them on our website. We'll have a little um, PDF sheet, cheat sheet, letter stamps, love it, love it, love it. Okay, for those of you who don't know what, um, Word Wizard is. Word Wizard is not a special education app. It's just an app that I found uh, on my journey. Um, and I think it might be somewhere about $10 or so. Um, but what makes it completely awesome is ah, <laughs> so it makes the sounds. So, ah, ka. Where's my tea? Cat. Right? I spelled cat. What if I take my tea? <gasps> what letter are you going to pick? The cab. <laughs> you made cab. So I love it because it allows you to manipulate the letters and then also hear the sounds. This app developer, um, to tell you the truth, I can't pronounce their name. Le. Let's see, maybe it'll say it here. Um, they also make this one called Montessori Crossword. Um, and so you have three letter words, um, blends, uh, words of any complexity, words with clusters. It's a little bit more in the realm of conventional, but um, you get the same alphabet. Hub. Right? So that's another one of my favorites. And then the same app developer has a writing one. A. I can't. Ah. I'm not exactly sure how occupational therapists feel about this because you're using your finger and not a writing utensil. Uh-oh. So you get sounds and then you, when you finish the whole letter, you get things that float across the screen. Okay, so that's that one going really fast, but uh, you can always um, explore these on your own. Um, Pictello is one that a lot of speech therapists who do AAC know about. Um, and what I like about it is it's customized stories. It takes a little bit of time and not every parent has the time, um, but some kids, um, this is like a way to create books when your child really isn't interested in books. And so um, thinking about that Aquaman um, uh, child, he really liked The Incredibles. The Incredibles. And so I was able to make a book. This is Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible is strong. Right. Um, and so there's a way to make books. And then there's a way to create a bookshelf so that your child can pick the books that they want to read. This is a really good independent reading activity where if you um, have an iPad that's not associated with watching videos and cartoons, and you can lock uh, Pictello into the iPad and say, you know, what books do you want to read? And then they can pick the books that they want to read. Some kids don't have the dexterity for that level of selection. So touching here. The Incredibles. And then touching the corner, there's like a little arrow on the corner. There are several other book apps that have it slightly different. Um, one is called Clicker Writer. And the, well, uh, 
The thing about Clicker Writer is that you can customize where the turn the page is and how big it is. Um, so here's a picture of um, a, a story, and then you can touch this button here uh, in order to turn the page. And so the child had um, some challenges with accessing that little arrow at the top. And then finally, I have one child who um, the only thing they could really do was swipe. They didn't really understand how to tap or tap specific areas. And so um, I think this is how this works. My son loves his Audi A3. And it's, this is his Audi A3 engine. It's just a swipe. Um, so those are some online examples of books. And then finally, uh, I'm going to share my screen because this is my other all-time favorite thing. Um, let's go to, actually, before I do that, I'm going to unpin myself. How many of you, just with a show of hands, um, live in Seattle or King County uh, and have a library card? Okay, a few of you. So if you are in a different county, if you're in Snohomish County or um, in other locations, just check with the Snohomish County library system. Um, here is my all time favorite online hack. So at both the Seattle Public Library and the King County Library System, with a library card, you can go in, and I'm hoping you can see how I do this, um, Seattle Public Library, and I go to Books and Media uh, and eBooks. And then if I scroll down, and y'all are gonna tell me if you can see this or not, here's this um, title here called Book Flicks. And then if I scroll down further, Here's this other title called Tumble Books. And if I hit Tumble Books, for example, let's see, I want to also use the app. Okay, thank you, Christy. Um, it, I hit Tumble Books, and then I can say Explore Tumble Books. And with a library card, go ahead quickly. Now I'm in Tumble Books. And what's lovely about this is your child can just pick a book. And if you're on an iPad, you know, they'd be touching. Uh, here's a book. And then it says, read it online. And then you can set the parameters to read automatically or manually. Um, I set it to manual. Uh, and so if you're on an iPad and you have the use of your hands, you can touch and um, turn the pages over here. Uh, and if you're using a switch or a switch, you can use a switch adapter and then just position your cursor right here on the arrow. And so when your child um, uh, hits their switch, they actually turn the page. Click. When my dog was made, they used leftover parts. So that is book flicks and tumble, and it's all free. Um, and it's online and it's free. And so um, I hope that maybe that is new for some of you. So those are my, <laughs> Cass is shaking her head. Janice is going, holy cow. <laughs> I love it. Thanks guys. Um, so those are my hacks, some of my hacks. Um, I have more, but I'm going to stop talking. Um, and I love what people put in the chat. I'm wondering if anybody would like to open up their mic and share, share their favorites. And I'll give you a prompt, actually. Here's what it would look like. It would say, I'm really excited because this thing works with me and my child. Um, and so if you need that little extra push, you can say, I'm really excited. <laughs> so Cass I can go. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Hi, Marcy. <laughs> it's good to see you. I don't know if you remember me. My I daughter's Finley. Yeah. 
Um, so she really loves specifically loves looking at real life photos of things. And obviously she's like very motivated by things that she's highly interested in, like all kids are. And so we've put together like personalized alphabet books of like pictures of her favorite things like a through z which can sometimes be hard to think of all the letters but you know we made her kind of a flip book with the letter in uppercase and lowercase as well as the personalized picture um, whether that was grandma like g for grandma who's her favorite or s for swimming which she really loved um and then in terms of like independent reading we made her flip books of like pictures of like her day at school or a vacation that we went on and like just added very simple text with it um, to describe the picture. So she loves looking at those books and flipping through them herself. And um, the other thing that helped out a lot in terms of like independent reading, also like choice reading, like reading, doing shared reading in a book we knew she wanted to read was putting those flat shelves in her bedroom so that we could prop books up with the covers facing out. So then every night, like she selects herself what she wants to read before we go to bed. So those are just a couple of strategies <laughs> that we've used. Um, I mean, we're still working on letter identification with that said, but just in terms of like shared engagement with her, those are things that really helped us just getting her to sit and actually attend to the activity, so. Thank you, Dean. I love that. I remember those books because oh, I don't remember how long it was when I saw you um, that I remember there was one of her like brushing her teeth and putting her socks and shoes on. Um, do you make them electronically or physically? Um, the, so an old SLP of her had done like some electronic one through Pictello. Um, but we make them all physical through like, um, I think it's called pinhole press. So they make like board books and usually like they put out like coupons. What's great is like they have, they're not the cheapest to make, I will say, but if you find a good coupon, what you can usually do is buy the book. Even if you don't know the, um, what your pictures are going to be yet, you can buy it with the coupon, like before you make it type of a thing. So that helps. Um, and they have a really sturdy, bi thick binding to them, which is great because she, you know, she'll just tear them apart, but like they're actually board books and with a sturdy binding and they've held up really well over the years. Thank you. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Feel free to raise your hand or just unmic. I can go. Thanks, um, Thanks Cass. Go ahead. Um, so I, someone in the chat said that their kid does not want to be read to, doesn't want to. And that for sure was my kids. Um, they are seven and four now. But between the ages of about 12 months, to their fourth birthday around there. Um, anytime I would try to read aloud to them, um, they would like take the book from me, throw it across the room. Um, they were like very emphatically against being read to um, physical books. So we realized um, that if we went, my kids don't have access to YouTube on their own, but um, if we at night would go to books, um, with the B-O-O-K-S, which is video books, right, on YouTube. Um, it does, they do the same sorts of things as far as like the words that the word is being said is being highlighted or whatever, right? So um, as Pictello. Um, and that was totally the only way we could do shared reading between those ages and now both of them love books right but I do not think that would have been the case if we had like made it a chore and something that we were really pushing so I I just want to put that out there if any parents are listening and you're like you know what my gut is my kid is really hating this like it's okay to do something a little different right um and and now we still do one book's 
before we do physical books at night, right? Like we still do one. It's like a little hanger on. Um, and then the other thing that was really helpful in bridging my younger daughter um, into liking books um, was the Chameleon Reader, which is this. And there's a little pen, right? And you record using stickers, you can record the book. So you have the physical book, right? Um, but then you record each sticker, each page. Um, and I think that really like reduced the sensory messiness of joint reading, right? And increased her autonomy around it. Um, so it was still my voice, but she was in charge of like, okay, the page that I'm open, to, I am pushing when the sound starts, the sound is, all our attention is on the book versus her having to pay attention to words that were coming from somewhere else, me. Um, and it, it really seemed to help. Um, so I, I really love uh, the Chameleon Reader for that. And she, we have so many books um, that are all stickered, like A Day With No Words over here, Charlie learns something new, um, but each page just has a little sticker on it, right? And she just touches the pen. And so she feels really proud of herself and then she wants to keep doing it. Um, those are probably my like two big ones. I'll have some more for AAC stuff if, if we get there. I love it. Thank you, Cass. Um, and um, you're doing the YouTube, I imagine on an iPad. Yeah, versus like on a, computer I, ipad yeah yeah just thinking about like uh what was working why did it work you know maybe it was because it's not this giant computer screen it's just this little it's the youtube books on the ipad um, but that's something to think about for all of you right like if you try it on an ipad and it doesn't work you know maybe try it um on the if you have a desktop um, and then Carolee, thank you. Um, uh, Leapfrog Reader Pen is also um, a, a similar. And yeah, I was going to say- you can't do your own books. That's yeah, the, you can't do your own difference. books, but it's a, still a nice independent way. Like I used them for my daughter when she was littler just to give her an independent task. Um, but I, the Chameleon Reader is awesome because you can do that for any book where Leapfrog your- committed to what it is, you know, the book that it comes with. Um, so yeah, similar, but just if you're looking for, you're like, I don't want to program, but I just want something quick. Like that's a great thing. Thanks, Carolee. I have a couple other, can I share, does anybody else want to go? Yeah. So no. um, one of the, as we were talking about like public libraries, one thing that I have done with my daughter, um, who is seven, um, is I, we listen to books on tape in the car. And it's a really nice, like, we'll then come home and, like, read them. And then she does get to watch the movie. But it's a nice way for us to have that experience. And it's an interest that she gets to pick out. Um, so even just, you know, there's little short books that are, like, five and seven minutes or chapter books. Um, but that comes on the library as well. Um, and I was thinking about, so I'm a speech-language pathologist. And um, Marcy, some of the shared reading. So it's not quite a hack, but one of my favorite go-to books just to get kids engaged. It's a board book and it's The Little Blue Truck. Um, I actually owe this all this credit to a family and a client that I used to work with. Um, but it's a great book for just some fun animal sounds. And especially if you're using a device or even if you just want to make the fun sounds and it's simple, it takes off like that word or like labeling pressure, but it's a really fun book to make silly animal sounds or go find those animal sounds. Or if you're using buttons or pointing to the animal, like it's just a fun one. Um, that, um, like I said, I owe all the credit to the family. They showed me their love for the book and I got to experience that. And it was a beautiful shared reading. Um, but another thing that I've done too, and I, it's the same family, but, um, I've actually programmed parts of a book for some kids just to get that shared reading once they're older and they do have their favorites. Um, I've programmed in like a little line. Um, pajama time was one, you know, pajama to the left, pajama to the right. And so kids can have that kind of page and access. I mean, I'm not saying do this or talk to your speech therapist, like 
I'm going to all talk about core words and stuff, but it was just a nice, quick, easy way to say like, oh, I want to read this book and here's my line. Like I know what turn to take. Um, so there's so many things that you can do. Um, one of the things that one of the moms are, was asking is about like interest and engagement. And I find not only with my daughter when she was younger, but also littles um, is books that are interactive. So I will use books that have tactile feelings or tactile you know, like there's some monster books out there. I forget, but you can like feel the monster or like as born books has the, that's not my hedgehog. It's too. Um, and so sometimes we just start with the interest of the book and like, it's, that's where I said, start slow. Like maybe it's just having the book out on the floor and maybe it's opening it the next day, you know, and it doesn't look like reading at first, but weeks down the road, maybe it will. Um, another one of my favorite ones to use in my practice is using, it's like the little people, the little flip up books or, you know, like, and so you can, um, it's like little people and they're a board book, but you flip it up. So like, then there's a, you know, there's three monkeys underneath it. And so you can get all sorts of different ones for like zoom theme or farm theme. And it's just, it gives them something to do. Right. Um, or I have a, I'm going to do two or three more books. I have a, a brown bear, brown bear. Um, and so it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive, but it has an actual slide for what's coming on the next page, right? So like it gives them something to do and they get it, they get to do it or, and you get that exposure. Um, and then the other one is like the tails book. Um, and so you would move little tails. So it has like a little board, um, like pull thing or push thing, and then the tails move. So I think as you're looking for things, um, and somebody said like my kid destroys books or it's really hard on them. Um, a baby gift I always give friends is the indestructible books. They're like six or eight dollars. You can get them on Amazon. If you're up in Bellingham, they have them at Village Books and they are wonderful and they're lightweight and you can put them in the bath. You can put them in a diaper bag. You can spill on them at a restaurant. So that was my little trick. And I would always take them in diaper bags with us to restaurants when we were in that phase. And you had a book to look through and some of them are just pictures and some have cute little stories. Those are my hacks or suggestions, not really hacks, but ideas. Thank, thank you, Carolee. I love all of those. And it actually is, in, um, for those of you who don't feel, um, um, like you want to contribute with uh, being in the camera and uh, in the spotlight. If you and your child have a favorite book, uh, like the little blue truck, uh, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, you know, certainly uh, books are expensive. So if you're going to buy ones, you having our own local recommendations is great. Um, and I love all of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to collect all these, um, write them out and, um, uh, Cynthia, yeah, you can go. And then you'll have this list will be on our website. Where's spot? Love where's spot. Go ahead, Cynthia. Oh, yeah. So uh, my child is actually quadriplegic um, and he has visual deficits as well. So it's been really hard to really find books that he can even turn the pages to because um, he has completely like very limited movement of his whole entire body and even uh, tending to certain even um, visually um, because he has visual deficits as well. So I did like um, what people said too about like just like touching and sensory tactile. But one thing that I found that has helped um, making books, like what other people were saying, um, like I we've done this, like where we have made like I got these pre-done. Um, I live in Florida, actually, so a lot of people seem to be living in Washington. But in Florida, we have a scholarship here, um, so I homeschool him. So we can get these um, and we make these together and then like, um, but also popsicle sticks is something like I attach them to, to try to help him like turn the pages because he has trouble. And then another thing is puppets. Um, I found that like I'm um, putting puppets along like with when I'm talking about the book, because since he can't really visually attend to some of the pictures, um, I get like little puppets um to go along with the book as well so I um will like actually like more animate it when we're talking about it um so that's really helped and then these are like little things that came along and so while we're like talking about the book like I'll pull out the little pre-made things and um and I sort of like animate it alongside and I try to animate my voice as well along with it 
And um, something that we did together last year, I believe it was an Eric Carl book. Um, I also put on YouTube, I like what people are saying. And I, um, I, I did the, um, like a story, like a puppet story, but like when he was taught, like, and I put it on YouTube and I, I had the storybook with the animations about the book in the same time, pulling out the little puppet inserts. So, um, to try to bring it to life to him in a way. Um, so he can try to understand what those, like each item, you know, what, what I was talking about. Um, so those were just like, I don't know, just different things. I'm still, of course, looking and I really liked everyone's ideas. So I'm definitely going to take that along. Um, and then Teachers Pay Teachers um, has actually been something I've, I've been, because I homeschool my son. Um, I like, a lot of the teachers paid teachers things and I, I use that along for books um the AAC I know we're not diving deep right now about it but um I use that a lot for the AAC portion of things too um that's been super helpful for um for like talking about the book or like little puppeteer things that I use for the books and um and then like, if we're talking about like, um, like right now I'm doing the, the book of dragons love tacos. Um, like we're making a taco. And then I also use a little, um, like a taco and then the dragon and then I'll like animate it too. So those are just little snippets of things that I'm doing along with the book, but I really loved everybody else's ideas. So um, just trying to get as many as ideas as possible. <laughs> But um, yeah, those were just a couple things that I just wanted to say, but yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Oh my gosh, so creative. Oh, and I love you. <laughs> how you adapted, um, you know, adapted both for the tactile um, and also kind of that 3D, like bringing it to life. Um, and so if there's a vision impairment, um, then you, you get more depth and you get, uh, and then acting it out to really glue it together. So great. Okay, it is eight. Um, I want to give, I mean, I'm okay with staying on maybe for another five-ish minutes. And um, if anybody else really has that burning idea that they wanted to share, um, I really want to hear from you. Um, I know some of your cameras are still off. Wait, somebody. Uh, um, so I can go. Um, yes, I was the one who put board games in there. Uh, my son is a little uh, older, so he's nine. And we realized last year that he really um, likes to go to the library and play board, board games with his friends. Um, he's not speaking. He's an AAC user now. He started using it. Um, but the, the way we went about it is we started homeschooling him because he was not doing great with academics. He knew his letters. He knew his numbers and everything. But then we had to start board game to coax him into like addition, subtraction and all that. So we kind of went like math island for um, math, math and then Scrabble Junior for, uh, you know, language and uh, word formation and all that. And then um, Uno, we would just play crazy little boy games with Uno, like what is the next number? And do you see the same color? And that's how we kind of like got gotten used to also using his device because we talk we modeled through the device and he kind of, um, but when he was young, we used, we had this one book that he used to love. There used to be a dial for music. It was a Disney book. He basically ripped it apart now. It's been long gone, but it was his favorite because they, there were all these Disney stories. And then when he turns the dial, the music goes on, you know, one of those like box things that you find. That book was one of his favorite. The other was with the polka dot. There, like you pop the bubbles on the book, and it counts to ten. But then every um, every page has like a story. Oh, there were ten fishies swimming, and then there are nine fishies swimming, and then eight fishies swimming, and then you keep poking. Um, it's like it pops basically. So it kind of like got him really into the book. But he's he's normally a very light he loves reading books but he's an auditory processor too so he doesn't do like a I'm paying I'm gonna look at the book but he's listening to the book 
with with a fidget in his hand. So he started a lot of audiobooks as well. And Spotify actually has a lot of these audiobooks. Recently, he was very interested in the Magic Treehouse series. And all the stories are actually on Spotify. So we played it while we're, uh, we, when we go to bed. Right now, I think it's Finding Nemo going on. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we do in the night. Like we have, uh, when he's already in the bed, we put the Spotify on our Google Home and then it just goes on. And then we put sleep music for him. Um, this is after reading the book, but still it just is, that keeps going and he's listening. So that's one of the things probably someone can use. And there's also a service called Bookshare. Um, if you get, can get a disability certificate from your speech SLP or a pediatrician, they will actually give you the subscription for free. It's an audiobook um, reader. And when it reads, it also highlights the, uh, the section that it's reading. So it's really good. So yeah, that's kind of like what I want to share. Um I love all of those suggestions and I didn't know that Bookshare, you could do it for free as long as you have the. Um... Yeah, we just go like you, you do the membership and then it will ask you for the details of school and everything. And then it will tell you once you've done it, it sends you like an automated email that if you send the certificate, you send this form to us filled in and then we will give you the membership. And then it's like, a, it, they don't advertise it but it's a resource for everyone. Yeah, I love that. And also, um, so you actually were reflecting on what Carolee was saying, a lot of um, books that have manipulatives, right? Um, yes. Ways that the child can interact with the book um, tactily. Um, thank you for sharing that. Sure. Uh, let's take one more, if we have it. I have something I can say, but if anybody else who hasn't talked has one, I want you to go instead. No? no. Okay. This is a really small thing, but um, I recently realized um, my daughter uses Proloquo to go. And um, I, you know, there's the text and then there's the, on each button, there's the image. Um, I really upped the size of the text and it sounds small, right? But visually, it is really striking <laughs> um, how much easier at 120% um, it is to see the text portion of the button um, than primarily and only the image. Um, and you can also, um, like, we started when she was two, right? So the message bar was not something we really cared much about. So we made that really small to maximize the amount of space for buttons as she's getting older and sentences are starting to be a thing, right? Um, I also made, now the message bar is large, right? So change the size of that to draw attention to like, now we make sentences up here, right? Very cool. Um, and same thing for the toolbar at the bottom. If you wanna sort of start drawing attention to um, the keyboard, that's a good way to do that. Increase the toolbar at the bottom, um, she she got really interested whenever I changed those things. Um, so it's small, but so those are wonderful. Um, I love I love it, all the hacks, all the ideas that y'all are contributing, and those um, changes can be done in other apps too. Um, not quite in the same way, um, and sometimes with a lot of headache. Um, but most of the apps uh, will most of the robust apps will do the same sorts of things, being able to enlarge the text and um, change the message window size. Um, so thank you all tonight. Um, I'm gonna stop recording, but I'm so excited that we have the ability to share this for other people uh, to hear all of your amazing ideas. Thank you.